What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here and today we are looking at a game from the fourth world champion Alexander Aliekin or as we like to say it in the US Alexander Alekine. We're going to look at this man this monster here the fourth world champion and of course he has the opening named after him. I go knight of six actually if you play e4 I'm just gonna put my knight out and I want you to attack my knight like crazy so that I can attack your center later. I think it's even d6 here. I don't even play this opening, but the Alakine though, the Alakine or the Aliakin, bro, he's a monster as we know, guys. But in this game, he played white against Aaron Nimzovich, or Nimzovich, as we just looked at a game that uh, he just played against uh, Kappa, right? In the last video for the World Championship Series, we do and cover for every world champion here. So here we go. This game was in San Remo, 1930, and it's a French defense. Here we go. E4 from Aliak, and he's playing white. E6, D4. I love to see people play against the French defense, especially the legends. So let's see what he played. D4, D5 and Knight to C3. Knight to C3, I have been a big fan of this for a while. I just recently played. I played a Milnerberry now. I love it, actually. I'm a big fan of it. It's very tactical. I'm sacrificing the pawn so I can try to mate and I crush you. So that's my kind of chess here. But I did try this for a long time, and it is good. Knight to C3 uh, is the Nim is the um, Winar, Winauer. And um, who is it? Um... Roman, of course, Roman DG Hasvili is a big fan of the nice three variation himself. So uh, that's why I studied it because I'm a big Roman fan. So Bishop B4, E5, C5, Bishop D2. Yeah, this is the Roman stuff, bro. Ooh, this is cool to even see right now. This was played all the way in 1930. They were still doing this. And this is what Roman recommends, actually. It's the Bishop D2. 97, Knight to B5. Bishop takes, queen takes, castles, and c3. So is it c3? Yeah, it is a c3 here, correct. c3 is the move. c3 is the best move. Yep, this was, happens all the time, actually. And uh, usually you'll play in this fashion. We don't have arrows. I wish we had arrows here. But f4, f4 is, is, is part of the idea. Knight f3, bishop d3. But actually, you don't have to play c3 in those lines. Now, think about it. You can actually just go back like knight of like play f4 and if they capture then you play f4 so i mean a knight of three and then bishop d3 so it'd be like this f4 takes you could play knight of three knight c6 you actually keep this pawn here a6 knight d6 and then we're actually going to capture this i mean this this line gets like crazy takes takes rook takes knight takes queen f4 give the exchange back and this attack is like crazy for white is wild so but back to this position though uh is what was played in the game is actually c3 and then b6 it says this is an ugly move basically a groundless attempt black does not succeed in exchanging his c8 bishop good and natural enough was knight f5 just a natural move knight f5 it was just better preventing knight d6 as played with success by nimzowich against lasker in zurich in 1934 so and then they said that game went like this interesting okay sorry b6 and f4 and then bishop a6 and then knight f3 yeah so this is usual guys and especially if you're going to play in this fashion here i was just talking to some students about this but you have to like uh play where your pawn structure tells you to your pawn structure points to where you should be playing and it's pointing as you see guys towards the king side so in almost not every french but many frenches guys i would say majority of the frenches especially if you're going to play the advanced variation you're going to put a bishop on d3 and usually you're just going to attack this side of the board i've literally never had problems with the french um yeah i just never had problems guys so never had a problem with the french now sometimes you will face uh like when you get stronger you're going to face it's going to be harder to beat it but it is not something to be afraid of i don't think no um, i mean every player is a little different right but French is always like attacking, just trying to attack them. So queen d7 and then a4. This knight, this knight is like cemented here on b5, and now after a4, it's like even you know better. So let's see, let's see what let's pay. Let's let's look at the whole board. Well, actually, let's make the easy move first. Knight b to c6, and then let's make another easy move. Uh, oh, b4. Okay, so let's look at this move, guys. So take a second and look at the board. Let's see what's going on here. Expect him to take it. Expect him to take. Why would he go B4? Let's see what he said here. Okay, strangely enough, this more or less conventional move by which white prevents knight A5 and at the same time forces a clearing of the situation in the center. Oh, so like clarifying. I have seen, heard of that, of course. Creating or uh, created a kind of small sensation at the time, the late Dr. Tarash 
for instance, called it in his comments, highly original. Correct. Like, I'm like, B4? But I get it. I guess I, I get it in the sense that he's actually stopping blacks anything before it happens. He's like, that's like a huge prophylaxis thing, which is uh, which is um, very important, very important, of course. But that's a uh, prophylaxis is more like Petrosian all the time was extremely prophylactic. Probably one of the best prophylaxis players ever was Petrosian. But he would stop it before it even happened, before it even happened, happened, you know. So he just knew you was going to try this before you knew you was going to try it. And he would stop it. But uh, prophylaxis here is very important. And uh, he played B4 to actually, actually do that. So C takes B4. C takes B4, and then bishop B7. So he just said, I had enough. I can't do nothing anymore on this diagonal. Knight to D6, and then F5 with a question mark. Decisive strategical error. Wow. Okay, so why is it an error? So, like, before we, like, look at the next move, is it, like, knight G5 or something? G4? I mean, that jumps out. But because you can't, I mean, you could take this, though. You could take and then take on e7. I mean, maybe, maybe so. Let's see what happens. a5. Okay, yeah, I'm not thinking that. <laughs> Reason being is because I'm always trying to mate in the French. And that is one thing that you do have to, <laughs> you got to have a healthy balance. You can't always just crush them, okay? Yeah, as, long, as much as we want to. We want to always crush them, but sometimes you got to play it slow. And I guess this this is that kind of game. A5 is, but that's what comes with it if you play B4 anyway, though. He might have different shots in different positions if he would have played Bishop D3, which is more aggressive in a tactical manner, like myself. Here, this is, it is, it is more positional. It's playing on both sides of the board and like just more strategic. A5, Knight to C8. You got to get rid of this Knight on D6. That is a common theme in, in this practice here or in this in this variation, knight takes, queen takes, and a6. Yeah, and then queen f7. I mean, yeah, white's doing just excellent, honestly. I mean, white's doing great. Like, all these pieces are, are better. And uh, let's see what Stockfish thinks here. Stockfish says uh, it's like plus three, bro. Like, Stockfish, like, you getting crushed. Now it just jumped up to almost plus four. Insane. Wow, and then it just fluctuates a little bit, but crushing. Yeah, I, I can see knight g5 is always a threat. h4, like, I mean, the bishop needs to get active. That is quite annoying, but in-game wise, too, I mean, like, white's just winning everywhere. The knights look gross in the in squares-wise. They can't go anywhere. Literally, you're just shuffling pieces. Bishop to b5. Now the game is effectively over. Black is unable to defend his ad and is his his uh, black is unable to defend adequately his six c6 and c7 squares okay c6 and c7 yes and also the rook coming to the file guys this pressure is immense here this is too much pressure here they say in chess pressure will bust pipes or make diamonds here and here it looks like um both <laughs> it looks like both that's even worse so it's going to uh to be over here bishop to b5 let's see the rest of the game knight eight to e7 you can't give up and then castles and then he just plays h6 i mean you got to do something with your life here rook f to c1 and rook f to c8 very simple and then double dub on the bub here rook c8 rook c2 queen e8 man this is like man, how do you feel defending these kind of positions right especially from the black side let's just flip the board like ouch you know, this sucks to defend this. You don't have anything to hope for. And if I'm playing black, I'm just trying to do, I'm trying to survive, honestly. This is terrible. I mean, this bishop is killing me right now. I need to move my queen out of the way, but then I don't have any squares. So I'm kind of just shuffling, honestly. And like, well, I know what to do now. I, I, I want to get it. I want to get this over with fast, you know, and safely. I want to draw out of this or hopefully win. And then, um, you know, go back to the drawing board and remember never to do this again. So let's see what happened. Queen t8. Rick A to C1, I mean, this is beautiful. Rick A to B8, because you don't have really anything else to do in life. Queen to E3, that's an interesting move. I don't know what that's about. Queen E3. What is he doing with this move, guys? I guess he's trying to swing to the queen side and play Queen A4. That's probably what that's about. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I don't really understand it. We'll see. You know, we'll see. Maybe Queen A, because I'm thinking he's trying to put more pressure on the C, on the knight here. And if you go queen d3, he might be able to take on b4 just because the queen was on d3 and like some type of tactical thing. Queen d3, rook to c7, and then rook c3. Queen d7 and rook 1 to c2. Oh, guys, Alakine's cannon. Aliakin's cannon. Wow, queen c1. This is a classic, classic. Rook 1 to c, king f8. So I've seen this in tactics. This is so crazy. That is cool. I've seen this in tactics, but the real game actually is even better. Look at this. 
Guys, you always hear about Ali Atkins' cannon. Here it is. Or gun, actually. One or the other. Ali Atkins' gun. Cannon, same thing. Same thing. Queen C1. After tripling the heavy pieces on the C file, white's pressure becomes unbearable. I mean, this is gross. Now, guys, I actually had a similar position like this in the Scotch Gambit, you know, the Scotch Gambit. We have a playlist on that, so check that here on the channel. But, uh, yeah, I remember that. That was um, honestly very, I mean, this is pretty cool to see because, like, I had kind of a similar position like this with uh, the rooks here and just having a, a really good time there. I won the game. So, queen to c1, rook b to c8, and then bishop a4. That is a good, that's a great move. b5, huh? The last link of the positional attack started by a5. In order to save the piece threatened by b5, black must sacrifice the b pawn. After this, he succeeds in protecting the important squares with his king, but must still reside as a, as a consequence of complete zugzwang, says Aliakin. And then b5. Bishop takes, king e8, bishop back to a4, king d8, and then h4. h4, game's over. h5, king h2, g6, g3, queen e8, and then b5. Dang, complete zug. I mean, wow, that is amazing. And he knew that, like, from back here. He was like bishop a4 because he saw the next the upcoming zug in the bug on the way big fella wow get the man off the board that was beautiful that was beautiful and then we have the ali atkins gun here ali atkins cannon whatever you want to call it it's named after him and he uh he did a great job here i mean that was pretty good that was pretty good let me actually run through that just one more time uh, quickly i do want to see the moves again good stuff okay so we got our win hour we play bishop d2 we play our knight b5s we take and c3 is a little bit different um a little bit different f4 i like it though it's more so it's more it's more solid like it literally is more solid that's just the best way to put it it's just more it's solid and it's a good position and well uh, what does fisher say tactics flow from a superior position so it, it's um like you, it's superior that's really exactly what it is it's just a superior position takes i mean he didn't do anything miraculous honestly out of the opening he just moved pieces around didn't sacrifice nothing really like it was just kind of easy honestly to say the least takes i mean this became a very easy position guys what did he do spectacular like nothing just play good chess but the, i mean and it, it comes like that a lot of times in the french it depends on what lines you're playing and how they're playing it but yeah and then this was a zug game over beautiful play beautiful play that was ali alexander aliakin guys the fourth world champion i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys check out the playlist i put together for the world champions recovering every single one then we're gonna look at more games from them of course we're just gonna load this up but appreciate you guys watching the video if you like it leave the comments under the video and all that other stuff check out the links under the video i appreciate you guys um for being here and uh supporting as usual so i'll see you guys on the next video